let's put Jesus aside. Why should I follow your Old Testament? You shouldn't. Or even though in the Old Testament, it says that God wants to, through the nation of Israel, bring the Gentiles to the worship of God. So you're saying yes. Isaiah was full of it. That's not what he meant. He didn't mean no, the don't revelation. Tell me it's in front of you, Isaiah 42. Don't lie to me. Your Isaiah says, whoever the servant is, what is he going to do? Isaiah 42 in front of your eyes. Lie to all nations. Lie to all nations. Yeah, I know. Okay, so why did you just say I shouldn't? Why does it mean light to all nations? Why does it have to mean the Torah? Because God is telling Isaiah that the servant yes. will bring them to the knowledge of God and worship him. Yes. Isaiah 45. So how am I going to worship your God without the Old Testament? Why does knowledge of God equate the revelation given to the people of Israel? How am I going to know who God is Israel? without the Old Testament? Answer the question. Set in an example as a light to all nations. How am I going to know that it's Yahweh if not the Old Testament? Where am I going to find that this is the God of Abraham, not the Old Testament? Most people don't know it's the God of Abraham without the Old Testament. But the God of the Old Testament wants the people to know this is the God of Abraham. So how are they going to know that without the Old Testament? If you tell me, worship God, which God? All of the Quran or the God of the Hindus? Which God? The Creator. Who is he? Muslims tell me it's Allah who sent Muhammad. But they take it from us. Us where? I know, the Bible. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so that's my point. My point is, you told me I shouldn't. That means you just went against the Old Testament because the Old Testament says your job, if you are a true God-fearing Jew, is to bring me no, to the God of Abraham. But my knowledge of the God of Abraham is in the Old Testament. Yes, yes. But okay, not the Torah. So, but it's not no, binding no. on you as a Christian. That's what I'm Wait, saying. No, no, no. Forget about Christianity. Put that aside. Isaiah says, it's your obligation to bring me to the knowledge of the God of Abraham. And where is that knowledge found? Yes, in the Old Testament. Okay, so then why did you argue with me? What's your view about the Messiah? Uh, do you believe in the Messiah? He's coming? Yeah, yeah, of course we do. What do you believe about the Messiah? Uh, he's going to be wise beyond his years. He's going to be son of David. He's going to be... What does it say he's going to be a son of David? Netzel Migezeshai. Isaiah 12, I believe. Or no, it's Isaiah 11. But I'll give you a million 11. bucks to show me it says Messiah. Oh, no. Uh, you, you mean literally the name Messiah? Yeah, I want to know because Shia you rabbis, or not you rabbis, you, you Jews have selectively decided which prophecies are messianic which are not, in order to show that Jesus is not the Messiah. So I'm not to play your game. This is what you're referring to, Isaiah 11, not 12. Yep. Then a shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse. I'll give you a million bucks, and we'll all convert to your religion. Show me where this says this is about Messiah, the son of David. Stump of Jesse. How do you know Gezei that's shine. Messiah? How do you know it's not one of the Gezei Davidic kings that came? One of the what? One of the Davidic kings. That is a Messiah. What do you mean? No, one of the kings that historically rose to prominence and power. Sorry. So was Hezekiah from the stump of Jesse? Yes. Was Josiah from the stump of Jesse? Yes. Was Solomon? Yes. Okay, now prove to me that this is Messiah, not one of these kings that came. They're, they're all messiahs, but not the oh, so messiah. Okay, no. The messiah. I want you to show okay, me prophecy about the messiah. Because he has not yet come. All of these have not yet been fulfilled. How do you know it's not referring to one of the historical kings? Because it's speaking in the future tense. How do you know it's not referring to one of the kings that comes after Isaiah? Are we going to keep going th doing this? Because you know there were Judean yeah, kings up until the Babylonian captivity, right? I know, yes. Okay, so how do you know it's not referring to one of them? I don't think, if I recall our history that's correctly, I don't think, think that they, okay, I don't think that it matches any of the other kings after. Well, us. you can you can think what you want because if you have read your scriptures, even the promises that God makes are conditioned because He says that His throne will be forever. But then He says, if He obeys My commandments, like He said with Solomon. So how do you know it's not conditional? Because of Second Samuel seven. That's gonna. That's actually going to work against you. Because Second Samuel seven fourteen fifteen is about Solomon. I know what you're referring to. Second Samuel seven. Go 14. there. I, I want to see it. I want to see it and see how well, you. I'm going to show it to you. Very easy. You sure you want to see it? I know it. Oh, I just no, want to see. Because you're... have you read the parallel for? I know. I know that it's about Samuel. Uh, oh, sorry about, about Solomon. Who? Solomon. Sorry. Okay, so I don't need to prove it because then look what he says about Solomon. Hold on. Y Yahweh. The God of Israel chose me from all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be a ruler. And the house of Judah, my father's house, among the sons of my father, he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. Now of all my sons, for Yahweh has given me many sons, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of Yahweh over Israel. And he said to me, your son Solomon is the one who shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be a son to me, and I'll be a father to him. And I will establish his kingdom forever if, here's a condition, if he will be strong to do my commandments and my judgments is done now, is done now. So what if Solomon doesn't do his commandments? Will his kingdom be forever? No, but it didn't say, Good. he never said that he removes his kingdom from him. I didn't say he removes the kingdom from David. It says Solomon's kingdom will be forever if he obeys my commandments. So if he doesn't, that means his Solomon, not talking about David, won't be forever. So my point is, Isaiah 11, how do you know it's not talking about one of those historical kings that had he obeyed God, then his rule be forever, but because of sin, he then disqualified himself. No, I'm because sorry. because it says here that it's forever, right? And you, I know you that sure there's a conditional here. 
I know that there's a condition no, here, because but it's I don't never been met. You don't know the Tanakh. Because I just said, maybe you're not clear, that when you have statements that says his kingdom will be forever, you can't just take a passage in isolation because then you're going to have to look for all the other passages related to the same theme. And all throughout the condition for the sons of David is they must obey. Otherwise, the Lord will discipline them. Do I need to show you some? But that's not but that's not what it said in Second Samuel 7. That's the, okay, that's but, the problem. Buddy, all right. I'm gonna, okay. Now, you sure you want to go that route? Now, Isaiah 9, 6, you just proved Messiah is God in the flesh. Now, I'm going to play your game. What does that have to do? With it doesn't say because it says the child born who sits on David's throne. His king, El, El Gibor. Yeah, I know. I know that. Uh, who is this? No, El Gibor. It's supposed who to be the this? Messiah. Yeah. Oh, you agree it's a Messiah? Yeah. Oh, you shocked me. I'll be honest because most. Because in, no, it's it, it's it's really not that complicated because in the Bible, oh, the, idea of, the idea of the. No, it's not because in the because ancient world, the idea, of, the, mighty God. the idea of being God. the idea of the king being God or son of God is really not that. Perfect. No, very complicated. Because I want you to hear me out. I'm going to challenge you. Show me in Isaiah where the phrase El Gibor is used for someone other than true God. Let's use concordance then. The very next chapter, El Gibor is used of Yahweh. Isaiah 10, 20 to 21. Hang on. Now, it will be on that day that the remnant of Israel and those of the house of Jacob who have escaped will never again rely on the one who struck them, but will truly rely on Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God, El Gibor. The very next chapter, and Isaiah is full of references, there is no other Eel, Elohim besides Yahweh. But in the ch chapter previously, the mighty God will be born as a child. So your God's going to be born as a baby? No, that's his name. It's not him being mighty God. No, that's Much in, this, when in, the previous, someone, in the previous the chapter. Yeah, easy, but in the previous man. chapter. Buddy, take it easy. Okay, okay, I know okay. your okay. arguments. Listen to yourself. So because he's called Wonderful Counselor, he's not really a Wonderful Counselor? See, so listen you to mean? your stupidity. Why, so you I, I don't get what you mean. Can you explain it? You said that's his name. That's not who he is. So he, yes. his name is Prince of Peace, but he's not really a Prince of Peace. No, the name indicates that he needs to be a Prince of Peace. He's going to be what? It, Say it again. He needs to be a Prince of Peace. So but it, it's not it's not a quality of him. I'm listen to yourself, dude. Listen, uh, you're being recorded. So he will be named Prince of Peace because he needs to be that, right? Yes. So the name refers to a quality he must have. Okay. Is that what you just said, right? Yes. Okay, so that means the name Mighty God means this is something he must no, become no. the Mighty God, according to you. That's why I want you to go to the previous chapter. Isaiah, Isaiah 8, 8 is about what? Ma'il Shalal Khashbaz, the, the one that you usually skip. And why? You the text Christians. tells you why he's called that, right? Yeah. Why because it's called? it's a prophecy about Damascus and Iran. Oh, so so what the, child, it doesn't have to do, it doesn't have to do with him okay. being Mighty God. It has to do with you know, you the just situation. You yourself. You're not listening. Did you not just say Prince of Peace is something he needs to be? It is. Yeah, it is. But you I just refuted required, yourself. But, yeah. but now you're contradicting yourself because you're saying Prince of Peace is something he needs to be. But then you went to Isaiah's son and you said, see, that name is not what he is. So make up your the mind. Why does the prophecy need to be um, so unanimous in its understanding? A Prince of Peace. Just say he's not going to be a Prince of Peace. I don't understand why is it so complicated. It's it's really simple. No, you made it's, it complicated. The, You're burying yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'm. I, can, um, can I please can explain, you explain myself anymore? to me? No, I need to first see how you're going to butcher this. Please explain to me. Is the child actually a ruler of peace? Will he rule in peace? Yes or no? It's a it's a prophecy of what he's supposed to be. Okay, so okay, he will be I'm that, right? Not necessarily. But wait, I'm going to bury you because it says his kingdom will be forever. So now you're saying it's conditional. To establish and employ it with justice and right here on the throne of David's kingdom to establish and hold it from then and forever. Now you just contradict yourself because you said, See, in Isaiah 11, right? It's unconditional. Well, here it's unconditional. Could you, it forever. Could you pull it in Hebrew, please, so I can read it in Hebrew? I, I don't have a perfect recollection of the Hebrew here. So now you just admit forever doesn't mean unconditional. It doesn't have to be extra. So make up your mind, buddy, so I can know how to address you. Like, like I said in 2 Samuel 17, it's not conditional. Like, yes, it is. That, no, it's not. P so please then, pull it up. Please, please pull it up. Please. Yes, please I did. Pull it up. When he, I know it says, I will not take away my love from him as I took away from from Saul. Do you believe Second Second uh, First Chronicles twenty eight or what do you mean? What do you mean? Do I believe? I just read to you that in verse seven of First Chronicles twenty eight seven, that is king will forever if he obeys my commandments. So you're saying Chronicles not contradict Second Samuel? Did we not just read that, dude? Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean. Okay, so stop playing talking. games with me. That's I know what Second Samuel seven, but I don't pit scripture against scripture. I'm being more charitable to your Old Testament. 
I believe that passage explains this passage that Solomon's kingdom will only be forever if he obeys. Can you now show me to prove my point before you read Hebrew? Can you show me any other place in the Tanakh where the throne of David is also said to be the throne of Solomon? That they will inherit the throne of Solomon? That the throne of David is also yes, the throne of Solomon? Is it not true in all these prophecies of the coming kings? It says the throne of David, the kingdom of David. Can you show me where it says the throne of Solomon, the throne, the kingdom of Solomon? Why does it need to be in those words? Because according to you, when God said to Solomon, his kingdom is forever, that's unconditional, meaning it's his kingdom, right? Not just to him, to his lineage. <laughs> why, why do you, uh... But you said it's unconditional to Solomon. No, the, the dynasty is unconditional, the not the kingdom it. itself. I'll let everyone decide how you contradiction. Now read the Hebrew from here. It is. You can read right to left. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about second time. This is Isaiah. We were talking about Isaiah 9 where it says the child to be born, his yes. throne will be forever. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. So can you put it back? Brother, why are you doing this to me? Are you trying to make me a heart attack? You know, I'm not patient, but go ahead. Read for me. Okay. Now, tap dancer on Olam. Tap dancer on the because this is the Olam. Olam. Yes. No, no, it's, it is forever. Okay. So, can we stop the nonsense and coming back? Wait, did it say. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Can you go back, please? Did it say. Guys, how long do you think this guy's going to last? Let's see. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait. I'll give you time. Shalom. Ain kets al kise David. Ve'al mamlachto. Le'achinota. Ulesad. Le'achinota. Okay. I actually never I never noticed that. Never mind. Okay, never mind. I I'll, I'll concede this argument. Okay. It is forever. Now, oh no, 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 no. Don't concede that because you're gonna do what happens. So now this is an unconditional promise. He will reign okay. forever. Is that what you're saying? His dynasty, yes. So guys noticed he said yes, because I don't want to on the throne way. of David, yes. And that means he will then actually become the Prince of Peace. No, you know, I gotta I, say I, I'm right. you, you know you gotta get out of here, right? Now. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I if I can't catch up. I'm sorry. Okay, so can you I'm be honest right. and say you said that the name he the name means that's what he needs to be, but doesn't mean he'll become it, right? It's a prophecy, yes. I, I think. But now you admit this is unconditional. That means he will actually become king. He will actually sit on David's throne, and he will rule forever. So he's going to actualize it, right? Yes, I guess. Yes. Now be honest. Then that means that he will then actualize being the prince of peace, right? Yes, this future oh, king. Now, yes. I, now I like you. Then it means he will actually become the mighty God. You're stuck. I'm not so sure, no. Not too All sure right. that I'm stuck. Okay, well, let's ignore that. But I, I know you're being convicted. So what other prophecy do you have that you think is about the Messiah? Uh, I can't pull one off the top of my head. Okay, I want to show you because you like Haggai. Your name is Haggai, right? Haggai, yes. Okay, let's go here. Now I want to see. I want you to explain to me. The first temple of Solomon, Shlomo, the cloud appeared, fire came out of the cloud and consumed the sacrifices, and Solomon and the priests saw it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And not only that, but in the temple, you would have the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. You would have yes. the golden jar of manna. You had Aaron's rod, and you had the tablets of stone in the, behind the most holy place, right? Yes. In the second temple, did the pillar of cloud appear? No. Did they have the rod and the tablets of stone? No, there's, um, there's a midrash about the word there that talks about um so they didn't have it right i, I believe you no they, they didn't have it. it they didn't have it okay now since your name is haggai can you explain to me how the glory of the second temple will be glory than the first here it is haggai 6 chapter 2 verse 6 to 9 for thus says yahweh host once more in a little while i'm going to shake the heavens and the earth the sea also yes. and the dry land i will shake all the nations they will come with the desirable things of all nations i will fill this house it's not about the second temple Yes. You know this because you've read Haggai 1. I hope you're not going to disagree with me. No, I know, I know, I know. Okay, good. He's not being honest. I will fill this house with glory, says Yahweh host. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares Yahweh host. The latter glory, the glory of this house, will be greater than the first. Yes. And in this place, I will give peace. So what happened in the second temple that made the glory of the second temple greater than the first? And how did God establish peace in the second temple? In light of the fact it was It never story. happened. That's not what it says. Remember you said unconditional promise? He didn't say no. it. Okay. All right. Wow. Th this is this is this is goes to the interpretation of whether the second temple is a second temple or is he it merely a addition of the first. The latter house. This house. You want me to read? Okay. It I know. I know. But th this, this is, house. I know. Glory. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. What I'm trying to say is that this is goes into the interpretation of whether or not the second temple was the second 
temple or is it simply the first? I don't care what your tradition says. The text in front of my eyes. I will fill I know. this house. Do I need Which to Which means this house can mean the future house, not necessarily no, the second temple. No, because let's read from verse so on. No, I'm sorry. I Bye-bye, your tradition. On the 21st of the seventh month, the word of Yahweh came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet saying, speak now to Zerubbabel. He was not building a future house that didn't exist. He was building the second temple. The son of Shealtiel, governor yeah. of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest and ermanent of the people saying, who among you remains who saw this house in its former glory? And how do you see it yes. now? Yes. Does it not seem like nothing in your eyes? Well, hold on. Don't say yes, because when I tell you it's about this house, oh, no, it doesn't mean that. That's I know it. it's about this house. That's my point. It is okay. this house. But okay, this house so doesn't... How did it, this house become more glorious? It than... will. I will fill this house with glory. And But you think this because is the second it wasn't temple. finished built when Zerubbabel and Joshua were building it. I know. It That's took true. many more years so that even at the time of Ezra, they were still building it. Stop the games, dude. I That's know. I, I, I'm not denying any of this. Okay, so how did the second house become more glorious than it the first? It did not. That's my point. It didn't. So this is a false prophecy. No, it's not. That's my point. It's a, it's not talking about the second temple. You okay, because you think it, because you're wasting my time. Okay. This house, which house? Let's go back. This house that Zerubbabel is fashioning. This house I will fill with my glory. Okay. Can I give you an analogy, maybe to well, illustrate? Again, I my want point to deal with the text, buddy. I'm, I'm trying. Me, I'm, I'm trying. following the text more than you are. Can you explain it to me? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You know what? No, you're not. I'm, you're telling me I'm, it doesn't have to mean this house. I'm going to pull it up in Hebrew. Maybe it's more clear there. You want me to show you the Hebrew? You can read the Hebrew. It's not going to make your case. I think it will. Okay, let's see how it's going to make your case. My goodness, man. What I have to I just feel through. like we're talking past each other. I don't know how. No, else we're not. You're this. denying what the text says because you know it's going to show you you missed your Messiah and you don't want to repent. Here it is. Okay, Haggai. Let's go to Haggai 2. Okay. When do you want to start reading from the Hebrew from here? It's right in front of you. You want to start from verse 1? Yeah, yeah, okay. Talking to the guy. Scroll down. What does it say here? Yes, this temple, this house. Okay, good. Remember these okay. words, okay? Remember, take yes. These. Which temple? The one that Zerubbabel is fashioning, right? Yes, the same one that was destroyed. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. No, it wasn't destroyed yet. No, Meaning the first this, one was, but this one this is, is ex, not. This is built. exactly my point. This is exactly my no, point. No, that's not your point because the second one is being built. There it's is no second built. house. That's my point. There, there is never a second house. It's, it's Buddy, the same what are they house. building here? The temple. And when he says right here, so you're playing games with the text, but you have to act like a Muslim with your own Bible. That's okay. They have to pervert the text. Watch here now. Okay. A little while and I will shake heaven <laughs> and earth <laughs> and the sea. <laughs> All right. And dry land, I will shake all nations, and they shall come. The desire of nations, and I will fill what again? Abaytaze, yes, yes. Which I house? Ha this house. Which one? Haze, yes. I, this is what Which I mean. Which one? This the one Zerubbabel is building, right? No, no. That, okay, you know what? Yes. Yeah, for your sake, yes, because I, I don't think you understand well, my now, point. No, no, it's going to make because now I want to know here, what does it say here? Abaytaze, acharon minarishon. Okay. So this temple will be filled with glory more than the previous one. Uh, the former one is which one? How to show them? Which one is that? I'm going to go in like five minutes. I just want to make it. Okay. How, uh, which one is this? The former one. Harishon was the first temple. Say it again. The first temple. Okay. So when it says ha bayat haza, the same word used all throughout. I don't I hope I don't have to give the ha bayat haza. And then we haza. go back here. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Let's go here because I don't want you to do the tap dance, but please, friend, please. I, I know, oh. I know what you mean. I know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so can we now stop the game? Ha Bayat Haza is the temple that Zerubbabel and Joshua are building, right? All right, I think I can explain this. It okay, says, go. can you scroll down to the word to the word next to you know scroll down, please? Which one? Verse nine. Ba ha Bayat Haza. Ha okay. Ha Charon Mina So yes. Ha Charon here can also refer to the um to the prophecy in Isaiah, which speaks that he is the first and the last. Buddy. So Acharon here doesn't mean Brother, the, the, this house butchering? is the last house. Can you, can you stop butchering Isaiah 44, 6? Because that's telling God is the first and last. Here it's talking about this temple yes. in contrast to the former one. I'm talking about the word Acharon here. The latter. The word latter here. Acharon. It's referred to Ha Bayat Hazar. I know. The connection. 
I know. This is what I'm. This is what I'm trying to well, tell you. Is that... Why don't you come back some other time? Because okay. you said your time is up. Because we're spending. Yeah, I'm sorry. Come back. I'm sorry. Let me know it's you. I enjoy talking to you.